Coming up today, North Korea fires three ballistic missiles into the East Sea in apparent protest against the upcoming deployment to South Korea of a U.S. anti-missile defense system. Lawmakers grill senior government officials over the deployment of the THAAD system. The main opposition party is concerned its presence could severely impact Seoul's relations with China and Russia. First, the Republican Party convention kicks off in Cleveland, but the highly anticipated event gets off to a shaky start. Some delegates try but fail to push for another vote on whether to stick with Donald Trump. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Tuesday, the 19th of July. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Adidang TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Bream. We start this afternoon with yet another provocation by North Korea. Pyongyang has test fired more ballistic missiles, the first since South Korea and the United States announced the location of the soon to be deployed THAAD missile defense system. Let's get the details from our Connie Kim, who's standing by for us at Seoul's defense ministry. So, Connie, what do we know so far? Well, Mark, North Korea fired three ballistic missiles relatively early this morning in what appears to be a three-pronged protest against the sad deployment aimed at protecting South Korea from missiles like these. So here is what we know as of now. Seoul's Joint Chief of Staff says the North fired three ballistic missiles from North Panghe province between 5.45 a.m. and 6.40 a.m. South Korea time. In contrast to the military's earlier announcement, Two missiles, rather than all three, are known to have flown some 500 to 600 kilometers before falling into the EC. Now, the range is significant, as that's enough to reach all of South Korea, including the southern port city of Busan. And one missile is still being analyzed as to how far it flew before crashing into the sea. South Korea's military is analyzing whether the North intentionally shortened the range by launching the missile from a steep angle. The missiles fired this morning are presumed to be Scud class or intermediate range Lodong missiles, Mark. And Connie, the overriding consensus is that these test firings are linked to the recent announcement on the location of the third deployment. You're exactly right. Well, Pyongyang has threatened a physical response as soon as the location was confirmed. Now, this is the North's first test firing since Seoul and Washington announced last Wednesday that they would deploy the SAT system to Songju, a lightly populated county in the southern part of South Korea. Military officials here say that when that is deployed to South Korea, they'll be able to construct a multi-layered missile defense system that could shoot down North Korea's Scud and Patriot missiles should they target the South. And many experts in Seoul say it's highly likely the North will continue its protests against the THAAD deployment. So we'll have to keep a close eye on how this plays out. Back to you, Mark. Well, thank you, Connie, for that report. Now, lawmakers have kicked off a two-day Q&A session of government officials to discuss the ongoing controversies surrounding the THAAD deployment to South Korea. Representatives from the parties fired questions at Prime Minister Hwang gyo Defence Minister Han Min-gu and others, focusing on public concerns about the possible, possible public uh, health risks, uh, hazards posed by the electromagnetic waves emitted by the system's powerful radar. The U.S. military opened its THAAD base in Guam on Monday to Korea media in a bid to allay those fears, and the radar rate waves were found to be well below the maximum permitted under South Korean law. Now, aside from those issues, opposition parties have been voicing concerns on how the deployment could severely damage South Korea's diplomatic ties with China and Russia possibly hurting economic relations as well. The South Korean government maintains the deployment is vital to better tackle North Korea's continued nuclear and missile threats. South Korea's top central banker has warned against the negative impact a loose monetary policy could have on the nation's financial stability. Speaking at a conference in Seoul on Tuesday, Bank of Korea Governor Lee ju yeol said that while such a policy is needed to support growth recovery, close attention should be paid so it doesn't destabilize the economy. He noted that small, open economies are more vulnerable to external shocks. Korea is considered a small, open economy and faces the risk of massive 
foreign capital outflow if the key rate is too low. And the rate currently sits at a record low of 1.25%. He added that more effort is needed to limit the fallout external factors can have on the local economy and stress the importance of structural reform and international cooperation. Now, staying on the economic front and uh, South Korea's producer prices edged up slightly in June. The Bank of Korea says the prices rose 0.2% last month from May, rising for the third straight month. The central bank attributed the rise to a pickup in steel products as well as global crude prices. Prices of industrial products like steel products increased half a percent. The price of Dubai crude, which is Korea's benchmark, spiked over 10 percent in June compared to March. Compared to a year earlier, producer prices dropped 2.7 percent last month. Now, after months of debates and a whittling down of the field to one, the Republican National Convention has finally kicked off. The GOP is set to formally nominate Donald Trump as the man to take on Hillary Clinton. For more on what turned out to be a rather shaky start in Cleveland, Kim Mogyan reports. On its first day, the floor of the Republican National Convention was briefly dropped into chaos after opponents of Donald Trump failed in their attempt to change the rules of the event. The anti-Trump forces started shouting roll call vote as they wanted to change the convention format so delegates would be free to vote for the candidate of their choice rather than the winner of their state primary, who in many cases was Trump. My name is Phil Wright. I am the chair of the Utah delegation. I make a motion that we have a roll call vote on the rules. However, party leaders announced there was insufficient support to allow a roll call vote that would record the number of delegates opposed to Trump as only six states supported it below the threshold of seven. The secretary received requests from a total of nine states requesting a roll call vote on adoption of report on the Committee on Rules. Subsequently, the secretary received withdrawals which caused three states to fall below the threshold required under the rules. Accordingly, the chair has found insufficient support for the request for a record vote. Some delegates walked out in protest at the ruling, while pro and anti-Trump parties chanted roll call and Trump respectively. If the delegates had voted, some watchers suggested that Trump might have failed to garner the 1,237 votes needed for the nomination. Kim Mogyan, Arirang News. Now there's been another apparent terror attack in Europe, this time in Germany. Four people have been injured after a young Afghan refugee went on the rampage with an axe on a train near Würzburg in the south of the country. Our Kim Jong-soo has more. The Interior Minister for the State of Bavaria has announced that a 17-year-old refugee has been shot dead by police after injuring four train passengers on Monday evening. Fourteen others are receiving treatment for shock. German media reports the attacker shouted Allahu Akbar as he hacked at the passengers. He later fled the scene and then tried to attack police officers who confronted him before being shot dead. It is believed the attacker, who came to Germany alone, had been living with a German foster family in the nearby town of Oschenfurt. The attack comes just four days after the truck attack in Nice and is likely to heighten anxiety in Germany regarding possible lone wolf attacks by Islamic extremists. Germany has taken in tens of thousands of refugees from troubled areas in the Middle East over the past several months. The country welcomed over a million migrants in 2015 alone which includes thousands of unaccompanied minors. Kim Jong-soo, Arirang News. And France says it has found no evidence the terrorists that killed 84 people in a truck attack in Nice last week had links to terror networks. At a press conference on Monday, uh, the prosecutor for Paris said, though there were no direct links found, the Tunisian attacker recently showed a certain interest in radical jihadist movements. He said the terror attack was premeditated and deliberate as online searches of the killer's computer and phone showed information related to terrorist groups, the Bastille Day celebration and videos of terrible 
traffic accidents. Last Thursday's horrific attack also injured hundreds of people. 74 are still in hospital with 28 clinging on to life in intensive care units. 13 of those who were killed have not yet been identified. U.S. authorities have revealed that Gavin Long, the attacker in the deadly shootings in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Sunday, had specifically targeted police officers. A spokesman for the Louisiana State Police said Monday that the gunman had, quote, definitely ambushed the officers, end quote. Another senior police official added that there was no doubt in his mind that Long, a former U.S. Marine, had traveled to Baton Rouge to kill police officers. Investigations have shown that a website Social media accounts and YouTube videos tied to the gunman include complaints about how he perceived the police mistreated black people. The attacker was also carrying a Washi uh, Tor Nation membership card, a black nationalist movement that considers the federal government illegitimate. Long killed three police officers and injured three others in the attack. A Japanese court has sentenced a Korean man to four years in prison for damaging the facilities at the controversial Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo. Japan's Kyoto News Agency reported Tuesday that the Tokyo District Court has jailed the 28-year-old Korean man, identified only by his family name John, for four years for detonating an explosive in a bathroom of the shrine, damaging the bathroom ceiling. There were no uh, casualties. John was indicted soon after the attempt last November. Many Koreans are angered by Japanese politicians' visits to the shrine as the war dead buried there include several war criminals who carried out brutal atrocities against Koreans during World War II. Now, four in ten married women in Korea say marriage is not necessary. And this is according to a recent survey that shows a general shift in thinking about marriage and also child rearing in the country. E.G. Won has more. Married women in Korea still support the idea of marriage, but a growing number of women say it's no longer necessary. The Korea Institute for Health and Social Affairs survey of roughly 12,000 married women found that just over 37 percent said it's better to get married, while 11.5 percent said it's a must. But in a sign of the changing times, more than 44 percent said marriage is not necessary, while 6 percent said it's better not to get married at all. Researchers say that many of the respondents cited the financial burden of being married and raising children, as well as the lack of freedom in marriage as reasons for their answers. This is in stark contrast to a survey from 2012 of 8,100 married women ages 15 to 64. That year, 61 percent of respondents said people must get married or that it is better to get married while only 38 percent said it is better to not get married or people should not get married. The latest survey also reflects changes in married women's thoughts on having children. More than half of the married women surveyed said no to the question of whether it's okay to not have children. But a whopping 46.2 percent said yes, reflecting another shift in thinking in Korean society. Researchers say the survey reflects current trends in Korean society that show more people he says no longer see marriage as a life goal. Lee ji Arirang News. Now, if you're watching us in Korea, you might be wondering what the emergency text you got around an hour ago was telling you. Well, it was a heat wave advisory as we are in for another scorching hot midsummer day today. Seoul and four cities in the central Gyeonggi-do province, Hanam, Liwang, Ichan and Yoju are under the hot weather watch. The afternoon high in Seoul will top out at 32 degrees Celsius. The other places will be even hotter, hitting 33 degrees. It is humid as well. People are advised to stay well hydrated and minimise outdoor activities to avoid heat stroke. Temperatures, though, will drop off as we move into the evening in the southern regions with a chance for some on and off showers starting in the late afternoon.
Well, those are stories we've been following on this Tuesday lunchtime here in Seoul. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website adidang.com forward slash news. We also have a smartphone application. You can find that by searching for Adidang TV in your app store. Have a great day. Goodbye.